Hi everybody, I'm going to be showing you how to integrate one of my favorite integrals. It is the Gaussian integral, where we integrate e to the negative x squared over the entire real line. Now, if you've taken calculus 2, you're going to try every different calculus integration technique that you learned in that class, but you won't be able to integrate this function. In fact, we're going to have to use a special trick, and I'm going to show you that trick right now. So, the trick is, let's look at this integral, and let's just give it a variable name. Let's just call it i, right? So i is equal to the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity e to the negative x squared dx. Now compare this to this other integral I'm going to write. Let's call it, well I'm not going to call it anything, let's just write it out. Let's just say it's negative infinity to positive infinity e to the negative y squared dy. Now upon second glance you might think, you know, okay, how is this any different from the first? And funny enough, it's not any different at all. These two integrals are equivalent. It doesn't matter what I call the variable that I'm integrating over, right? It's just e to the negative variable squared, d variable from negative infinity to positive infinity. So these are equivalent. So this is also equal to i. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at I'm gonna look at i squared. So what does i squared look like? I multiply those two integrals together. And I get a double integral from negative infinity to positive infinity, negative infinity to positive infinity, e to the negative x squared, e to the negative y squared, dx, dy. So what I'm doing here is that I'm integrating the product of these two functions over the entire Cartesian plane, right? So here's y, here's x, and we're going to go from you know, negative infinity to positive infinity in this direction and negative infinity to positive infinity in this direction. We're just going to integrate over the entire xy plane there. But we still can't really do it in the normal sense. This is still not integrable with, um, or integratable I suppose, by normal uh, Calc 2 techniques. So what we do here now is we convert to polar coordinates. So we convert to polar coordinates to polar coordinates. And what polar coordinates are, you might remember, is that we have x is equal to r cosine theta, y is equal to r sine theta, and we know that r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. And I believe the angle theta is equal to the tan inverse of y over x. Okay, so these are all the parameters of, uh, or the variables in polar coordinates, and what's going to happen here is that we also have to change this differential area. So this is a differential area, this dx dy. It just represents, you know, the differential area in the Cartesian plane when we use x and y as our coordinates, but the dA has to change when we go to polar. So dA in Cartesian, in Cartesian, is dx dy, but in polar, and I won't drive this here, I'll make a separate video on that, so in polar is r dr d theta, okay? So knowing those two pieces of information, let's convert the integral. So now we convert the integral, the integral, right, so i squared, let me change color here, so i squared now becomes a double integral still, but this time in uh, theta and r, so I have r dr d theta, and on the inside, actually I don't even need all this space, let me erase this, I'll write the inside first, so the integrand is actually going to be e to the negative r squared, and now we have r dr d theta. If you're wondering where that r squared came from, all you have to do is look up here. We have e to the negative x squared, e to the minus y squared. So if you write that as e to the negative x squared, e to the minus y squared, this is just the same as e to the negative x squared plus y squared. And x squared plus y squared is just r squared. So right here we transform x squared plus y squared to r squared, right? You just square this and you get rid of that radical right there. Okay, so that's where e to the negative r squared comes from. And now we have to integrate, we have to integrate still over the entire uh, Cartesian plane. So how do we do that? Well, one way we can do this is we 
have the Cartesian plane here again, and we're going to take the radial variable, so r, we're going to have r here, and we're going to send r all the way to infinity, right? So we just take r, here's r right here, and we're going to shoot it towards infinity. And then we're going to spin r, we're going to spin this r by an angle of 2 pi, right? So if we go to infinity with in the radial direction and then we rotate by 2 pi, we cover the entire xy plane. So in, in picture, we're going all the way to infinity and then we sweep by an angle of 2 pi, right? And that's how we cover the entire xy plane that way. Okay? So in that case, the integration bounds on r goes from 0 to infinity and the bounds on the theta integral go from 0 to 2 pi. Now, we can actually do the theta integral first. There is no theta dependence in the function in the integrand, so it's just e to the negative r squared. So, if we just have the integral of 0 to 2 pi of d theta, that's just equal to 2 pi. So now i squared is equal to uh, 2 pi times the integral from 0 to infinity e to the negative r squared times r dr. And now we can actually use a u substitution. So let's just say that u is equal to uh, r squared, du is equal to 2r dr, and so du divided by 2 is equal to r dr, right? So now I can replace this du over 2 with that dr right there, with this r dr right here, sorry. And in the integral, I still have a 2 pi, right, so i squared still equals to 2 pi integral from 0 to um, infinity of e to the negative u du, right? So what does this integral become, right? So we have e to the negative u du, uh, this is just equal to negative e to the negative u, and we're evaluating that from u is equal to 0, u is equal to infinity, and remember this is still equal to minus now e to the minus u, so e to the minus u, that's just equal to 1 over e to the u. So this is equal to negative 1 over e to the u, um, oh sorry, let me write it as, uh, that's fine, let's just say e to the infinity. <clears throat> So e to the infinity in the bottom, minus 1 over e to the 0. Okay, so 1 over e to the infinity, well that's just going to be 0 because e to the infinity is infinity, 1 over infinity is just 0, so this goes to 0. And then we have a 1 over e to the 0. e to the 0 is just equal to 1. But we have these two minus signs right here. Okay, so we have a minus, a minus 1, that's a positive 1. So this is just equal to, so this is all just equal to 1. Okay, so i squared is just equal, oh and I, I'm so sorry, I totally just forgot my factor of 2. Remember there was a factor of 2 in my du here? Totally sorry about that. And that cancels out my 2 right there, so I just have a pi now on the outside. So that's why I was already kind of getting concerned. I was like, wait a minute, there's a 2 pi there. And that's where the that's where the 2 cancels. So i squared ends up just equaling pi times 1, which is just equal to pi. And hence, we now know that i is equal to the square root of pi, right? So the answer to this integral here, right here, that is just the square root of pi. So I hope you enjoyed this video, hope you learned something new today, and tune in next time for more math videos.